everyone. <laughs> this is Hal. I've been messing around and <clears throat> forgot that I was going live. It's great. Welcome. This is Coil Studios Guitar. Sometimes we do some keys, but I've got plans for that. Today, we are going to talk about chord embellishments. And we're going to talk about finger picking and chord embellishments, and also using a pick with chord embellishments. And what do I mean by chord embellishments? <clears throat> Chord embellishments, <laughs> noodling. Um, chord embellishments are when we take a chord, for instance, like, uh, it could be any chord, and we're going to use, let me put some chords on the screen here. We're going to use these basic chords, like the G chord. Now, you know, when you first learn to play the guitar, you play a G chord with this finger on the A string second fret. A lot of times people do that. And that's okay too. And that's actually a very valuable way to play the guitar. Also, on the G chord, people use these two fingers, your pinky, your fourth finger, and your third finger on the third fret, B string and E string, right? And that's good too. And we're going to talk about, let's see, let me pull up that next one, A chord. These are what I call foundation chords. Okay, your A chord, you've got your C chord. These are really important chords. You've got your D chord. You've got an E chord. And you've got an F chord. I think that's about six of them. And these are in my book. And let me look in my book just for a second. I think it's on page, gosh, it's way back in the back. I'm pulling up my book right now. In fact, let's just share this screen with you and let you see what it looks like here. Um, let's go to the top. This is the table of contents. This is page seven out of 397 pages. And uh, you can stop this <laughs> on the replay and check out and see what kind of things are in the contents. But I'm going to go way back here to the back of the book and look at, let's see here. Um, I'm trying to figure, oh, right here, the first position chords. Here, I'm trying to pull that up. There we go. These first position chords right here. Now, these chords are very important. I put, um, let's see, how many is that? 16 chords, D, E, A, G, D minor, E minor, A minor, C, D7, E7, A7, B7, D minor 7, E minor 7, A minor 7, and F. Now these 16 chords I would call foundation chords. And a long time ago, long time ago, like years ago, over 20 years ago, I was teaching in the Great Salt Lake Guitar Company store in uh, Orem, Utah. It's not there anymore, at least I don't think it is. And 374? I'm not sure what the 374 is about. The newest iteration of my book is 383. So and today is the 15th of February, and I usually come out with an update, but I was working on, let me show you what I was working on today. Kind of, oops, that's not what I wanted to put on there. I was working on Old Friends by Paul Simon, and working on the lead sheet, and I think I got it about done. I need to write down some of the chords and what they are, you know, because sometimes when it says F major seven, which one are you talking about? You know, are you talking about talking about that one or this one, or this one, C major seven, this one, this one? What uh, voicing are we talking about? So I have to clarify that. Getting back to basic chords. Ah, yes. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. What page number is it on? It's on page number 383 in my January, yes, 383 in the January edition of Quail Studios Music and Lead Sheets. I've been thinking about and I've been working on uh, an update 
to some simple and kind of like mini uh, theory for guitarists. And I'm, I was working on it a couple of days ago, Fast and Furious. And I get too deep into it. I need to make it really simple for you guys so that you can understand simply how things work. And so I'm, I'm going to have to pare that back. In fact, tell you what I'll do. Today, Dwayne, if you can't make it, that's fine. Today, what I will do in our Hangout is we will talk a little bit about that. I will actually send you a copy, those people that come to the Hangout. Tom, you can come. Uh, Albert, you can come. And, uh, you know, you guys have, you got my number and all that kind of stuff. You know, you can do that. Anybody else who is not out there that is not a patron or a supporter or that kind of thing, if you're not on my email list, you know who you are. Um, look in the description. You can see how to get on my email list or become a supporter or uh, a subscriber and that kind of thing. And I share that link with people. And I was thinking the other day, this is kind of off topic, but I was thinking the other day about doing a hangout in the evening for those people who are in the United States because I have a lot of people that can't make it during the day. That might not work for you, Albert, because... Hey, thanks, Tom. It says your acoustic sounds nice. Hey, Dean, how you doing? It's good to see you. Everybody, he calls it hurricane. That's the locals' way to say it, not hurricane. Okay, I turned up my guitar just a little bit. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, anyway, in the hangout today, and sometime in future Hangouts, we'll share some things with you guys. Okay, let's get back to these chords. Let's go ahead and look at these chords one more time. Let's start with, let's start with that G chord again and talk about embellishments. And I can actually give you some ideas about how to do embellishments. And embellishments to me, now if I was using my fingers, Right, now in a G chord, a m major pentatonic scale goes like this. It looks like a minor pentatonic scale, an A minor pentatonic. It's down here on the open. Open three, open two, open two, open two, open three, open three. That's major, G major pentatonic. It's also E minor pentatonic. And those notes can be used with that G chord. You see the G chord on the screen there? So a lot of times what I will do is I will use those notes right, as notes that I can use with embellishments for that chord. Now that's interesting and really only works with the G chord. Well, there, but you know, we've been talking about G major scale notes. We've talked about C major scale notes in the last few weeks. And I've been doing some videos on that kind of thing and helping you guys to understand this. And these notes that we use in the scales, we've been just doing it down here on the open position right now on the videos that I've been doing. We did talk a little bit about it up here, but for what we're talking about today, these open notes that go along with these chords, like the G major chord and the C major chord. Let's go to the next chord here and show you. But what I'm saying is... Those kind of ideas where you just hit the chord and sometimes you can open up a string like that and just open it up and see what it sounds like if it doesn't sound good remember if it doesn't sound good don't do it 
So that's another thing you can do. Okay, so let's go to the next chord, which would be A. All right, and I, these are just in random order. An A chord. We can also use an A minor chord. I think uh, I've got, you know, I've got like 77 chords in this, in, in that <laughs> section. Oh, we'll go back through it. Let's do an A chord. I got these ideas from playing classical rock and that kind of thing. You can also do it with your fingers. Right? But you know, whenever you change a chord, like when you play, let's go back to G for a second. If I put my finger here on the second fret, that's that basic standard G chord that everybody learns when they're first starting out. If I put my finger here on that note, second fret, D string, that's an E note. And that E note is actually the sixth of the chords. That's like a G6. If I put my finger on the A, that's like a, it's like an, a G add nine. And the, the A is right there inside the chord. It's kind of cool. Right? So you actually, you can name the chords depending on what chords, uh, notes you put in there. And if you learn certain chords, let's go back to the A chord. I use this finger a lot on my A chord. Right there. When you put your finger down on the third fret, that's called an A sus4. In fact, when you lift it up, that's called an A add 9. So that's a really good way to do that embellishment there. Right? Or you can do it with your fingers. Right? Those are really good. Let's go to the next chord here. I'm just giving you some ideas here. Now, C chord. I love the C chord. C chord is fun. And, you know, understanding these chords is important because we move these chords up the neck, turn them into bar chords. And we'll talk about bar chords in just a little bit. But first, we're, we're working with these open position chords down here because these are your foundation chords. Those 16 chords that I put on the screen a little while ago, let's go back to those just for a moment. These 16 chords here, can you see those really well? I'm going to make those a little bigger, right? These 16 chords I call foundation chords, right? Because they are excellent. Now, these chords, when you uh, go down to this column right here, the A column, you can see that there's an A, A minor, A7, A minor 7. Those chords turn into, they turn into bar chords. Now let's take the C off the screen since we're talking about A chords just for a second. A, A minor, A7, A minor 7. One of the reasons I have them in the same column is because they turn into bar chords. If you do an A chord with a bar, A minor, A7, A minor 7. On the fifth fret, that's actually a D. D minor, D7, D minor 7. Excuse me. Had a little snack before. It's repeating on me. <laughs> and then here in this E column, let's go back and show you, oops, show you that E column right here, this column right here, E, E minor, E7, E minor 7. So let's do the E chords. E, E minor. E7, E minor 7, right? If I go up to the 5th fret and play E with a bar on the 5th fret, E, E minor, E7, E minor 7. Because I'm on the 5th fret, that's an A note right there. This is an A, A minor, A7, A minor 7. See, so these basic foundation chords 
are the basis for playing all over the neck. Okay, let's go back to the A chord. Wait, wait, no, it was the C chord, wasn't it? Now you can lift a chord up. See that? If you don't know how to do this, you need to work on this. And this goes for any of these open position chords. What you do is you take the chord and you lift the chord and play the open strings and then drop it back down. You can do it with a G chord. You can do it with the C chord. You can do it with the A chord. If you do it with other fingers, you can do it with these three. Or like this. A little more tricky with the all the notes. Because sometimes what I do is I drop a chord in from an open string. I'm going to give an example here, a song example, in just a couple minutes. See? Or you can lift one finger. I'm doing a hammer on pull off. Or you can lift the second finger right there on the on the D string. Go up to the G string. See what I did there? I left my finger here, my first finger, and then I'm hammering on those notes right there, that part of the C chord. Third fret A string, second fret D string. You can do it with uh, your fingers too. give an example of how that actually works. Let's go to, uh, and you can also use those notes in the chord. Ah, my pinky on the third fret E string. Don't forget about that. You can do things like that. Remember, if it sounds good, it is good. Okay, let's go back to A chord. We already did that. C chord. D chord. Oh, I love the D chord. D chord is so fun. I remember playing classic rock back when it was new. <laughs> like Jethro Tull. Oh, uh, let's see. You know, he would do capo on the third fret or something like that. Right, I'm, do, I'm playing the D chord with the capo on the third fret for fun. Right, you can lift these two notes right here, sec second and first finger. It's the second fret E string, second fret G string. You can lift one note. You can do a that right there. It's called a D sus four. You can lift it up. That's a D add nine. You can actually lift all the notes like that. kind of stuff. It's really fun. Just mess around with it. All right, let's go to an actual song. I actually have some songs that I was working on this morning. And I'm going to use a, a couple of songs that a friend of mine wrote. His name was Tom. His name is Tom. He's still alive. Uh, Tom Steiner. Let's see here. I think I'm going to Oh, Fool for Your Love. I think I'll pick up a song that he called Fool for Your Love. And uh, what it does, it, he plays a G chord like this. Oh, let's take this off. This is actually a G chord. There must be reasons for the way you Sometimes I just don't know Try to understand So confused at times my head just spins around Sometimes there's doubts 
but I'm happy with you. I'm a fool for your love, such a fool for your love. Okay, there's where G chord is. I'm just playing three notes. The G, the D, and the B right there on the fourth fret G string. And I'm going for the the A right there, second fret G string. Muting everything else. When I go to the C major seven, sometimes I'll drop a, now this is what I talked about before. This is a, uh, looks like an A major seven. Right, an A looks like this. Three notes across, you take that middle note, the G note and you go down to, I'm sorry, the A note and you go down to G sharp and you got your A major 7. Well, when you do it in a bar, there on the third fret, you get a C major 7. So what I do is I drop the chord in like this, sometimes. I'll drop the bar in, strum it, hammer on the rest of the chord. Then I go, that kind of thing. I'll hammer on that note. So let's do that again. There must be reasons for the way you act sometimes. I just don't know. I try to understand. Let's break that down. So I did that G chord. Bar. Did a little hammer on. B minor 7. Hammer on. This is called a D with an A bass. Like that. I'm actually just playing the four, let's see. Yeah, the four inside strings. Open D, fourth fret on the D string, C or F sharp. A note on the second fret, G string. The D right there. Hammer on. So I went, and I did an open strum. Like that, so it's like, um, that you have all of these options because if you just play the chords without any embellishments it can get kind of stale all right let's go to let me look at uh, see if there's any thoughts here Tom says sweet <coughs> uh, Rob let's see Dwayne says I think a lot of it is just knowing where to add the embellishment <coughs> GFJ says you did that in Wichita Lineman. I did. I did. I've had some question some questions about embellishments lately. That's why I'm talking about it today. And I do this automatically. I don't even think about it a lot of times. I just I'll put an an embellishment in and if it doesn't sound good, I'll leave it out. I'll completely just won't do that again <laughs> in that particular song. <coughs> because some embellishments sound good in some songs and some don't sound good in other songs. This is really important. So, you know, just like I talked about before, if it sounds good, it is good. And uh, and Dwayne says, I think a lot of it is just knowing where to add the embellishment. That's right. And there's a lot of things that are, you know, that you can do if you're at a certain key, you'll know that all oh, these embellishments will work. And sometimes they work and sometimes they don't in certain songs. You just have to experiment sometimes. And through these embellishments, you all also make the song your own, right? You uh, put your own stamp on it. Hey, if you like what I'm doing, give me a like. I forgot about that. I always forget about that. Okay, let's go back to my book really quick and let's look for... That's not what I want. Let's look for a song. Let's see here. I'm gonna... Ding, ding, ding. Uh, you know, I think I'm gonna do... Not drive. What's that one by uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers? There it is. Not scar tissue. Snow. That's the one I want. So on page, let's see, page 244 in my book. 
at the end of snow I did some embellishments in the video if you've never seen my video look it up it's got like over a million views on it I can't remember how many exactly it's a fun song okay, let's put that one more time I'll show you right here let's make it bigger so you can see it better I'm gonna do this right here uh, right here at the end I'm gonna play let's see I need a capo on the fourth fret. So I'm going to put a capo on the fourth fret. Deep beneath the cover of another perfect wonder where it's so white as snow. I do that kind of thing. Okay, let me take this off the screen so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to do this um, G, D, A minor. Okay, and I'll show you the embellishments that I do there. First of all, let me do one more thing. Let me just pull these strings a little bit so it equalizes the pressure between here and here. <coughs> I'm going to check my tuning very quickly and see if I'm out of tune. Little teeny bit there, a little flat. Good, 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 good. Oh, that one's a little sharp. Let me pull it. There we go. That's good. That's good enough. Yeah. Okay, so I've got G. So, I don't think I do any embellishments on that. Deep beneath the cover of an Right there, I do a hammer on. Open string. And I do that. That's an A sus4 to an A minor to an A add nine, like that. So I'm just going on that B string. Right there, I do a, I hammer on the whole chord. Right there, sus4, D, D add nine, D, and A minor. too crazy here. It's a little bit, I bet it's probably, what, what can I do? Oh yeah, I can turn this down just right here. Let me turn this down a few dB and we'll probably not. Through the field where all my tracks will be concealed Why the snow. something like that. So that's just an example of what you can do with some embellishments. No more comments. All right. Some people dropped out. Like, I'm out of here. Okay. No problem. Really appreciate you being here. Thank you for coming. For those of you who are still here, we got seven likes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. All right, are there any questions? I'm going to sit here for just a second and see if there are any questions. It usually takes 20 seconds, 30 seconds after I ask for something for you guys to get back to me. And you're like, oh, wow, I get to get, get, get to my, my keyboard and ask a question or something. If you don't have any questions, that's cool. I'm okay with that. Not a problem. So I'm just hanging out here just for a second. Let me look at uh, one more thing. Is there anything else I need to cover on this? I'm just thinking about it. Uh, 
Oh yeah, I've got a tab on that uh, on snow in case anybody wants to see it. It's the uh, it's the part that goes like this. <laughs> That part right there. Yeah, you can do it with your fingers. You can do it with. Um, oops, let's see. Let's see. Sometimes I like to do it with my fingers more than with the pick. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to go. Thanks, guys, for being here. I appreciate it. Very good. I'm going to go hang out with my supporters, and we'll see you later. Take care. Is there anything else you want to do? Email me, lessonswithhal at gmail.com, and we'll talk. All right, very good. Sign up to be a supporter, and you, too, can get early videos and my book, which I will send to you, and e updates. I'm going to have a, have a... Nope, can't do that, Hal. Ha. Huh. <laughs>